You guys want the definition of quirky? Well, Oxford Dictionary categorizes it as an adjective, meaning characterized by peculiar or unexpected traits. That's Wes Anderson for you in a nutshell. How's it going, guys? My name is Zach. I love discussing all things cinema and entertainment, and I really do appreciate you guys clicking on this thumbnail today. I really hope you enjoy your stay, because we are finally getting a look at the French Dispatch, written and directed by the one and only Wes Anderson, finally made it out to my local cinema to go and check this out. And this is a gigantic all-star cast. There are some usual suspects from his filmography, such as Bill Murray, Tilda Swinton, Owen Wilson, Adrian Brody, Francis McDormand, along with the likes of Timothy Chalamet and Leia Sid do. There are just so many goddamn names to list. I'll go ahead and leave them all down in the description box below. This is basically a love letter to journalists set in an outpost of an American newspaper in a fictional 20th century French city, and it brings to life a collection of stories published in the final issue of the French Dispatch, which pays tribute to its recently deceased founder, played by Bill Murray. Now, I feel like I've gone on record in the past on this channel to say that Wes Anderson may be one of the most consistent filmmakers alive right now. His movie retain such a high quality of technicals, so many A-list caliber stars, all to go along with a wholesome, unique style. Similar to an Edgar Wright, you could just look at a movie like The Grand Budapest Hotel or Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I believe are his best two movies overall. Even bizarre movies like Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, which I'm personally not a fan of. But regardless, you're able to tell instantly who is behind the camera with films of that style. And the French Dispatch retains all of these quirky elements we We've all come to know and love from Anderson. You know what to expect. He's playing with the aspect ratio. He has some fun dialogue from characters who are for sure all colorfully distinct. All of these actors definitely are bringing their A-game. Not to mention... This is some perfect symmetry in some immaculate scenic design, which honestly may be one of the biggest praises I can give the French Dispatch. The production design is unmatched. I really, really, really hope it gets nominated in that category at the Oscars. It is just so weird, fun, unlike any other movie you'll see come out this year. The actual newspaper office, super cool. Each story within the movie has such an unorthodox style to it, and it all makes them feel wholly original to each other. Which reminds me, guys, if you're expecting one sound narrative from the French Dispatch, you're gonna wind up disappointed. This film, first and foremost, it's an anthology. The main crux of this movie is three different narratives from the best stories the French Dispatch ever put out. The first story we're shown is honestly my favorite of the bunch, because it definitely feels like it's not just the most soundly made, but I also feel like it's the most fully self-aware narrative out of the three stories we get. We follow a prisoner convicted of murder, played by Benicio Del Toro, who is fantastic, by the way. Maybe perhaps my favorite performance out of everybody in this, but he falls in love with one of the guards played by Leah Sedu and his painting of her catches the attention of an energetic Adrian Brody who plays an art dealer and knowing who directed it the quirkiest kind of chaos ensues. And that first story may be where the film peaks for me. The second act follows Timothy Chalamet as a revolutionary student in the same vein as a Les Mis. And even though Chalamet is his usual charming self, this is in my eyes the weakest story of the three. I hate to admit, it feels very plain compared to the other two. Especially after it's followed by the third story, which follows Jeffrey Wright going to save a kidnapped young boy. That story with Jeffrey Wright is where this film I noticed really likes to play around with all of its technicals. There's even one sequence which fully transforms itself into an animated car chase, which honestly confused me choosing the animation style in that regard, because it honestly made the movie feel a little bit aimless. You know, like it was just kind of floating around trying out various outlets of entertainment, which don't get me wrong, this is all good, but this is ultimately the thing that holds the French Dispatch back for me. Now shout out to my buddy Ren Geekness here on YouTube, who I feel like put it the very best. Why why are these stories considered the three best in the history of the French Dispatch? From my vantage point, that part really is never made clear to the audience. I don't know, this may just be based off of a first time watch. I'm definitely curious to check this movie out again to see if it holds up compared to some of the other Wes Anderson classics. But just first impression, no way do I think this is his best. Doesn't hold a candle to Grand Budapest Hotel, if you ask me. But this is a movie that perfectly sums up Anderson's strengths in a definitive anthology of some fun little narratives to go along with some immaculate performances. I'm gonna give the French Dispatch 
batch a B. Overall, no question that it's an enjoyable film. But this is of course all just my opinion. Feel free to sound off as much as you like down in the comments section below. Have you guys seen The French Dispatch? Did you love it? And also, feel free to let me know what your favorite Wes Anderson film is. Because I love the discussion. It really does make my day seeing your guys' response to this content. It really, really does mean the world. If this is your first time visiting the channel today, please do consider hitting that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can. This channel is on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I'm hoping to reach that goal very, very soon. Subscribing is not only beneficial to you, it's not only beneficial to me, it's beneficial to all of us, really. It's also totally free to you guys. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on your way out. That would be tremendous. And as per, stay tuned for loads more exciting content very, very soon, including some new movies like The Power of the Dog and Clifford. Yes, f***ing Clifford. I also just finished watching Only Murders in the Building, the brand new Hulu exclusive with Steve Martin. Expect a review for that very, very soon. And I'm so excited to announce that I have two retro movie reviews planned for two huge anniversaries this month. First things first, I will be looking at The Departed to commemorate its 15th anniversary. That might be the best remake in film history, if you ask me. Also, later on towards the end of the month, we're going to be celebrating the 30th anniversary of Beauty and the Beast. The single greatest animated film of all time, in my eyes. But clearly lots to look forward to very, very soon. Y'all are the best. And with all that being said, back talk, commence!